the new dispensation, the Second Republic, which is led by President Emerson Dambuzo Munangagwa, is a beautiful thing. The speech has started. Now, this, this, this is where you start clapping. <laughs> How is it such a beautiful thing? It is a beautiful thing because I'm yet to think of a country that has opened itself so much, a government that has exposed itself to the people so much, starting with right at the beginning of the Second Republic where President Mnangagwa rolled out a session which happens every Tuesday after every cabinet meeting where the public is informed of what was being discussed in cabinet. I'm trying to wreck my brains to come up with a different country that has got such an institution in place. I, have, I don't have one yet. I'm not saying there's none. But I'm saying there are not so many. If there is any, probably there is none except us. That's a hallmark of openness and transparency. But we are talking about impunity, perceived or real. This is again where I expect that ta, ta, ta. Ah, dead silence. We started the reform agenda immediately after the Second Republic came into place. We walked the journey of um, repealing IPA together. One of the hardest things or the most hated thing IPA was said to have was the criminalization of the profession of journalism. Now, all the solidarity messages, except that of Vivian, which was partially correct, but not very correct, didn't really acknowledge the removal of criminalization of journalism by repealing IPA. But then you can't talk of um, crimes against journalism or journalists without talking of the criminalization of journalism. So the biggest thing there was removed, IPA. Why was Vivian partially correct? Allow me to call you that, Mrs. Ma, Mrs. Jangash. Marana Jangash. <laughs> um, IPA was repealed. It was not partially repealed. It's gone. And I think this being the first conference we are coming to after the repealing of IPA, I think it's a big thing. I expected to see banners everywhere saying IPA is gone. I, I mean, knowing Honorable Paranza, how you fought so hard for it to go, how much you hated it, even though you are ZANU PF. It, <laughs> it was very clear that IPA was not a ZANU PF thing. It wasn't loved by ZANU PF or whatever. And I'm not here holding a brief for ZANU PF. I'm here holding the brief for government. But IPA had a cross section, cross sectional um, antipathy, which it, it had generated. So it is gone. It went in July. And come on, guys, join me. <laughs> of course. Because journalism is no longer being criminalized. But I have to admit that there are certain things that are happening which shouldn't happen in the practice of journalism. Um, I think the SG is heckling me. Uh, that's a heckle there. I thought, uh, I thought he was heckling me. Right. I, we are going there. Walk with me. SG. Just walk with me. Patience, pace. Um, you see, when the lockdown regulations were promulgated um, end of March, there were certain professions, practices, and businesses that were classified as essential services. Our ministry made a mistake. Our document went late to the AG's office, and your practice was not included. 
at that point. But it did mean that we had not said that. So in principle, we had all agreed that your practice was an essential service. And it proved that you were an essential service months later and even then. How did you prove that you were an essential service? Because you know what? You deserve a pom pom. You played a critical role in making sure people remained safe by driving the information, by disseminating the information on COVID 19. Yes, initially we did have some infodemics, as they call all these lies people talk about their epidemic, uh, epidemics. So we ha did have some uh, infodemics, but I think uh, it quickly receded. And information with integrity went to the people. So, yes. Give yourself a pom pom. You played a critical role, and we were right, you were an essential service. But that delay in gazetting you as an essential service did bring its own difficulties. Some of you were inconvenienced, but you classified that as harassment. I'm sorry, some of you were actually not treated well. But some were generally just inconvenienced. You were made to wait there for an hour or so while certain telephone calls were being made around. And I can assure you, and I've got a witness in the house. Do I have a witness? Aha, uh -huh, I do. Um, I can assure you that every journalist that was stopped by the police for 10 plus minutes, I was informed, and my office spoke to his office immediately, and he spoke to his officers on the ground. So in terms of the system, the system works because we are on your side. We are your advocates. And by saying we, I do not mean the Minister of Information only. I'm saying his department is because every time we call him or when I call him, we agree that this shouldn't happen if something has gone wrong. What we have how, what, I, how does this happen? Why does this happen? What we have at the moment is a little gap which is between the law, the policy, and the aspiration on one side and practice and culture on the other side. So the work that we are seized with right now is to bridge that gap. So that's the law the policy and the aspirations are reconciled with the culture and the practice. The culture and the practice, which goes down to the operation, operative or operational level, right to the officer on the ground. The officer on the ground has to understand what the new dispensation wants. What does President Munangagwa want in regards to media freedom? How does he want journalists to be, uh, to be treated? And I'm sorry to say, that this takes, change of culture takes a bit longer than we would all wish for it. You can change legislation, you can change regulations, you can change everything, but culture takes long. I would love to come in a situation where we snap our fingers and it all goes away. But it doesn't work like that because culture is embedded, culture is ingrained. And culture, by nature, is an accumulation and of unregulated behaviors, most likely learned over time. Now, to disabuse of things that you've learned over time and you embedded, and they, they give you sort of, some sort of power, to just disabuse of them like that, it may not work. It will take a lot of training. It will take a lot of information giving for that to change. And I believe my colleague agrees with me. Where it happens, I'm just talking about where excesses happens. Because excesses do not happen all the time. And they do not happen with every officer. They do not happen with everyone on the ground. Just one or two officers that do that. Just one or two officers may get into a room where a, co a crime is perceived to have happened. And they will just round up everybody and say, we'll take you with us to go and screen. And if you're a journalist, you go home. But the, our sensitive colleagues in the journalism profession, they would still quickly register that as harassment. If, um, if a burglary has taken place and uh, I'm found among them, 
and I'm rounded up with everybody and say, we will clear you when you get to the police station. And I print out in my ID, they say, we don't know if it's authentic, but let's just clarify it at the police station. Am I harassed? Okay, then I'm a victim. <laughs> These are some of the nuances that come within with what we are dealing with here. Maybe I also have to change a bit of my perception. Huh. But we are saying, and the good dog did say, I quote, we are heading somewhere. We are heading somewhere. Meaning we are in the right direction. I think the most important thing here is our direction of travel. Because you can only make progress if your direction of travel is correct. And actually, you are traveling. So if you are heading somewhere, there is movement. There is motion going to a certain cardinal point. The cardinal point is where all of you will feel very free to practice your profession. But your first line of defense, even in terms of perception, is to say it is to be professional. Even in your approach, even when law enforcement agents stop you, just remain professional. People point out, I, th I saw Misa issued a statement yesterday regarding two journalists, one of them who is, is, ba who, is ba um, who, because they were recording um, certain things which are considered security um, items around Bianeanda, um, a statue. Well, yeah, it is actually security because in other places, just a, a train station is a security establishment. You cannot photograph it. You cannot videograph it. It, 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 I said public police, I said public train station. Train station in England is one of them. You cannot record it. So if, if, if certain things are being put, I'm not justifying what happened yesterday. I'm just saying perception. So they were stopped. But you know what? They are left of cooperation. They found me straight immediately. And I spoke to the officers on the ground and we chatted a way forward. And he texted me back and said the officers were great, they were polite and everything and were released and were gone. Inconvenient, but his, they, I think the approach of the guys was also professional. So your last first line of defense is to remain professional. When I'm stopped, I'm a permanent secretary. When I'm stopped at a roadblock, trust me, if I'm told to, walk, to come out of the car, I always come out of the car. And uh, obviously, it's a frog jamb and it's a But... <laughs> But I think Jinana Frog Jambi, Toy Toy, and the rest, you see. And uh, it's down to the officer, not to the culture we, 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 we want. And that's, that definitely is abuse. And uh, in cases where it has happened, it, it's not only journalists, even uh, individuals. So, so let's work together. Let's be professional. Let's be fair. Let's have information that's integrated. Let's give people a right to reply or to respond when we write our stories. And from our point as a ministry, we will stand with you all the way. We will work with you. We will defend our profession. We will defend our sector. Sometimes where you expect us to issue a statement, because we shouldn't be a, a government that speaks at cross purposes, we may issue a broad statement which does not directly address what you want us to address. Because we cannot shout at another government department. That's not our job. Our job is to speak for them. So we will not shout at them. So you may be disappointed that we are not doing that. But I can assure you, behind the scenes, we are talking to them. And when we need to use strong language, we will use that strong language. I've got a witness in the house. I thank you.